Hi there, I'm Jamie. Welcome to another session of Vistex 4 Services. In this first of full series, I'll be taking you through the amazing process of lighting, shading, texturing and rendering this detailed exterior scene. I have more than 10 years of experience in industry and published several popular books on the subjects of V-Ray, Mentor Ray and 3D Visualization. To follow this tutorial, you'll need textures and the 3ds Max files. These files and the full video are free for my Patreon supporters, or $10 to purchase. To contact me, please email me on jamiecardo at hotmail.com or you can visit my blog by simply googling Jamie Cardozo. Hi there, I'm Jamie. Welcome to my new tutorial on how to turn any 3D exterior scene into a photorealistic render. Throughout this tutorial, we will focus on lighting, shading, texturing and rendering realistically. The shadows, 3D assets, model details and the camera composition are some of the main contributing factors in making an exterior render look more realistic. It's also worth mentioning that, in any daylight render, the sun outside and the overall environment should always be brighter than any interior or objects in the shadow. So without further ado we're just going to start by you know, creating the first camera. So we just go into cameras there, physical camera and let's just drag to create it. Uh, we're going to go into the modify panel there and then untick the targeted. A camera without a target will allow you to move freely without being constrained by its target. Also, let's go to the Customize tab and choose the Unit Setup option. For now, let's choose the Meters Metric System Display. I often switch between millimeters and meters depending on the values I need to type in. If the values I need to type in are too small, I choose millimeters, otherwise I'd normally just use the Meters Display Unit. I always try to, to make the camera at the eye level because that's a little bit more realistic. To ensure the camera is at the right level, I'll create a tape object and set its length to about 1.64 meters. 1.64 meters is the average height of most people's eyes. Select the ground and isolate. A quick way to select the same set of objects in the scene is to create selection sets. Simply type in the name of your selection set and click enter to save it. In future, if you want the same selection set of objects, you can simply choose it from the pre-saved selection sets. After tweaking with the camera position, we're going to open the render setup and change the render output size. To make the framing of the scene more appealing, let's change the width to 3500 pixels and the height to 1750 pixels and lock it as a starting point. After fiddling with the camera slightly, this is the position that we ended up with. Next, we're going to open the render setup dialog and reduce the output size for test renders. Also, we're going to load up the VWare renderer by opening the common tab, scrolling down, under the assigned renderer, 
click on the production toggle and choose the viewer renderer from the list. Okay. So you're just going to go through some of its basic settings. In the V-Ray tab, under the image sampler parameters, choose the bucket type. I normally choose the bucket type because it allows me to see the buckets being rendered in a frame buffer. I'll just click twice on that default toggle in order to bring up all the expert settings into the image filter there. By default it's set to V-Ray Lanxus filter. I would normally just go to area, that's just the standard. Obviously you can choose any of the other filters there. In here, we're just going to leave it as it is for the time being. Go to the GI, and under GI primary engine you're going to change it to your radiance map and the secondary one light cache again we're just going to click twice to bring up the export mode which will give you all these extra settings here enable the ambient occlusion the ambient occlusion is key in adding connecting shadows to objects even when these shadows are directly lit because without the connecting shadows the renders might look slightly flat so by default the radius is set to 100 millimeters which is 0 0.1 again because the, the units is set to meters so in here you can actually change it just as a display there so in here instead of radius being 100 millimeters you can go to 300 millimeters there so these are the instances when I actually need to change the, the unit display from meters to millimeters because in here obviously I need to type in some really small values. The radiance map by default is set to, to really high. Just going to change it to uh, me uh, and I'm going to low again because we're doing some test renders. Go to light cache because this is an exterior scene I don't think we'll need anything above a thousand subdivisions there and the light cache so we leave it as a thousand you know maybe we can go to 800 to start with there and everything else seems okay as a starting point before we create the sunlight we're going to make sure that all four viewports are in display because then you'll be able to just see how the light is being created so you go into the lights panels there Click on the photometric, choose the V-Ray. Under the V-Ray object type, choose the V-Ray Sun. And bring it in. Uh, you should be prompted with this V-Ray Sun dialog. You just click yes. Right click to exit the creation. In here you just start moving the sun up. Another thing that we're going to do, gonna open the, the render setup there and uh, we're going to lock the camera viewport here. Select the camera, come here and lock it. This means that even if that viewport is enabled or that one, this is the one that was always going to be rendered at all times. So you can just do a quick test render there. The white colours seem a bit too overexposed. To rectify this, we're going to open the V-Ray tab and scroll down to the color mapping parameters. By default, the color mapping type is set to rain hard. So we're going to change that to exponential. The exponential color mapping balances the highlighted areas more evenly than the other color mapping types. Enable the subpixel mapping and do another test render. As you can see, the highlighted areas are a bit more even now. Next, we're going to adjust the shadows to complement the building and make the foreground more interesting. This concludes the first of four series. I hope you liked it. If you did, please click on the like button and I hope to see you in the next one.